Hi, this is Metroid. It's a video game that was released about 25 years ago, and it's very good. I'm going to play it and talk about it, but I ain't alone in talking about Metroid. Hello, Metananda. I'm Gesh86, and I have somehow invaded Fresno's Let's Play. Ah, he's invaded, just like the Metroids of the planet Zebeth and the mechanical life. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, but the point is Metroid's a really good game, and we're actually going to go for the best ending in Metroid, and it's going to be pretty great, I think. Yeah, you only have one hour to do that. Oh, but I think I can do it. I I'm a super guy. Now, Metroid Purist, you might notice a couple of weird things going on with the game. That's because, in the interest of adding a little spice to the kitchen that is this LP, I'm running an emulator script thing. I'll link it in the description. It does a hell of a lot of things. Gives you 99 energy to start, adds a map, adds a little timer so you can tell how long you've been going. And while well, you can pause and check a big map of the entire, like, area, world, whatever the heck you want to call it, you can actually swap equipment out, too. Like, for example, if you get the wave beam, you can turn it off and put on the ice beam again, which is really great, and there's a lot of other little neat changes, too. Yeah, it really makes the game a whole new experience. It's yeah. It makes it a lot more like Zero Mission. Yeah. Not, that's, that's not thing, completely, Metroid. but... Not completely, no. That's the thing, Metroid NES is a fantastic video game, one of my favorite NES games, but I must admit, it is not aged entirely gracefully. There are certain things about it that are nasty, but this uh, little script does alleviate some of them. Like, you start with 99 energy, that's great, because in the original game you only start with 30, and that is kind of a pain. That's only four hits in Brent Star. Four? Wow, that's, that's not very much. Yeah. Good God. There are a few other nice little changes too. It's great. It's it, it, it's not really like as good as Zero Mission, I don't think, because but then again, Zero Mission I sort of consider its own beast entirely. I haven't played that game that much, but I think I should have at some point. But I don't know. Somewhat about a remake is holding me back. I'm. I kind of feel that it didn't really bring too much to the franchise, well, but, yeah. It brought one thing to the franchise, Zero Suit Samus. Yeah. Now, if whether that's good or bad, that's your own opinion, but, well, that sort of thing has been in Metroid since the beginning, as you probably are going to see if we do make the uh, sub-hour requirement for this game. Another thing about the Lua that uh, you didn't mention was that you can even see your maximum missiles now. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Yep, maximum missiles. That's, I guess that's helpful for tracking how many missile packs you've collected if you're like, going for a 100% run. Yeah, or just for information. Mm -hmm. I mean, they didn't introduce that until Super Metroid. Yeah. Not even in Metroid 2. Yeah, that's a Metroid 2. Yeah, that's a game you're familiar with and I haven't really played in a long time. I mean, I have it here. And I have Zero Mission here, too, so that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, Metroid 2 is a game that I'm playing at the moment. Yeah, it, it certainly did... For add, others, too. It certainly did add a couple of neat things to the Metroid franchise that I can't think of off the top of my head, but you are free to tell the people. Well, the Space Jump, for example. Oh, space I really jump. gushed a lot about uh, the Space Jump. Oh, Space Jump is great. Why are you going through this room? You have Space Jump. It also um, added a lot of beams, spacer and plasma. Well, two isn't a lot, but it's something. Well, it's double what this game had. Yeah. So and okay. some of the beams are a thing, are a little bit weird. We're not actually going to... I've watched a little bit of um, where you're going and so, and we're not actually going to see too many beams. Nah, not really. There's only two in the game. And we're going for one of them in a bit, but there is one little problem. The, the, the opening bits of these runs are kind of a slog, because, see, the thing about Brinstar is it only has, like, two missile upgrade packs, one of which I've already gotten in the first place. 
But I'm gonna have to open uh, two doors, two missile doors in a bit, which you'll see. And they take five missiles to open, and uh, I'm gonna have to rely on the deadly beast that is random item drops. Yeah, if you uh, want to kind of um, get everything in Brinstar first, you're not going to get a good time. I remember yeah. that much. Yeah, I mean, there are only two items I need here, so I just need to get five missiles after I get this upcoming item, which is essential. But it is a real pain, believe me. I've had to farm for missiles and test runs, and oh, it ain't pretty. I believe one time I was down in the Norfair farming for missiles, it took me three minutes and I didn't even get any. Yeah. That's... Random number generators. Always a source of great fun. Yeah, and I liked how Super Metroid did it, where oh, it, where uh, if you needed a certain power-up, it would drop. Like, if I was at full health and I was killing guys, and but I didn't have full missiles, they would only drop missiles. They wouldn't be dropping health. That's the thing I like about Super Metroid, but... Yeah, I, I remember... For like, eight years. I remember that Super Missiles had a really low priority, right? Uh, maybe. I, it has been... Uh, it's honestly been a while since I've played any Metroid game besides this one right here. <laughs> uh, something that happened just a few moments ago, you... Um, went into a new room, and enemies followed you into, and just dealt damage to you while you were in the room. That is the worst thing about Metroid, yeah. I think. That that sucks. Well, it's going to happen a couple more times as we go through the game, trust me. And it's, it kind of blows, believe me. I think these door transitions and so, I think they might have been a little bit of a ploy to hide loading times. Maybe. I, I think. I'm pretty sure. This was a Famicom Disk System game in Japan, which had loading times. Oh, if you've ever watched me play Castlevania 2 and stuff on here, and when I did that bonus video, oh god, yeah, the Famicom Disk System had loading times up the ass. Yeah, I don't know how it is with um, NES games, how the structure is different from the Famicom, but I think even old systems had loading times. They were just so negligible most of the time that people didn't notice often. Well, the Famicom disk system wasn't... The oh, there's another uh, addition, by the way. The breakable blocks, they regenerate, and now there's a counter that tells you how long they take. Yeah, it's, magical numbers. It's almost useless, but there's one part of the game I can think of where it's actually kind of helpful, but we're not going to get there for a while. Yeah, I remember that one. But yeah, these um, magical numbers that we're seeing here. Um, Samus is using her math powers. Oh, <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, you're a girl. Uh, the full disclosure, it's been 25 years. It's just, if you didn't know that, you're... Uh, I think I pretty much mean. everyone knows that. Uh, yeah. But still getting to see that she is... Still is has some kind of iconic charm to it. Yeah, in fact, the manual, the original manual, straight up lied to you. And the NES, it's like, you're Samus Aaron, he's a great, strong bounty hunter. Oh, there's your map, by the way. It's a, oh, yeah. Look at this, you got your equipment. Looks screen. pretty cool. Kind of just, it's like Super Metroid, but you don't have to map out the game, because it's, like, it's not designed like Super Metroid, where you get a map and junk. You know what I mean? Pretty much. Um, what I've noticed is that um, the Lua script really spoils a lot for you regarding that map. I mean, you can really kind of guess where secrets are with that. It's yeah. a little bit overpowered, maybe. This might more... Oh, that was weird, by the way. <laughs> a sort of moon jumped into that door. Oh yes, the ice beam. Yeah, this is the... What, this is the one beam I'll be getting for this round. The other beam is the wave beam, and it just shoots in a like, weird parabolic arc thing. It's kind of like shooting Medusa heads! The ice beam, I find it very impractical, um, but at the same time, sometimes it gets the job done. Yeah. But often it's just kind of annoying that you have to hit enemies twice as often. 
Yeah, it happens. But you could do what I just did and just freeze it and then lay bombs on its frozen head. Yeah. That's great. So we're pretty much done it with Brinstar for now. Now that we have the bombs and ice beam, we can get out of this lovely place with this great music and get rid of these weird, annoying little, uh, I don't even know what they are. It's they have an official name, I'm sure, like Zoomers or something. I wouldn't know them. I only know the German names because I only have the German manual. Uh, and, yeah. and they really changed that up a lot. I Metroid don't... 2 as well. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know. Exterminate the Metroids. I, 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 I don't even know what they would call it. Is Metroid still a Metroid in German? Of course. That's not something they could allow themselves to change. Oh, uh, it's a proper name or something. Uh, Samus really loves that lava acid stuff in this room for some reason. She just keeps taking baths in it over and over again. I don't know why. Surely yeah, it's, it's not so hard. It's on my part. No. It's so hard to get out of that. It's it's uh, kind of sticky in this game. Really? Not so much in others. The thing is about getting out of the lava. You can't. If you jump immediately after you fall in it, you're not going to get a very high jump. But if you let yourself sink down a little and then jump, you somehow get a full jump. It's really kind of strange how that works. Yeah, but knowing that is going to help a lot. Yeah. And yeah, we've only used 10 minutes. That's not bad, right? Pretty good so far. I've gotten better time, but it's okay. It's fine. I had to farm a little for the missiles, but it's, it's all okay. I don't like these swoopy bird things. I especially don't like these things. Now, you mentioned the whole, uh, well, if you go through a door, the enemies follow you through a door transition. Those things are the worst for that, because if there's one, like, flying towards you as you go through a door, it's just going to keep flying and boop, pop you. Yeah. If you trigger them at a bad spot and go through, you're pretty much sure to get hit. Yeah. I there's don't also know what some. The heck I was doing there. Yeah, you were pretty cornered down there. Kinda. There's also a lot of rooms uh, where there are enemies, certain enemies so close to the door that you can't actually avoid them, but... That happens at least once or twice in the run, but... We're in Norfair, and well, you can tell things are a little bit spookier. This is one thing I really love about Metroid, is it's got a certain mood to it, you know what I mean? It it does have a certain mood to it, but I don't think it quite hit the spot like it wanted to. I think it took until Super Metroid to really get it right. Uh, the thing about Super Metroid is that it kind of combines uh, the strengths of Metroid 1 and 2 when it comes to the music, the peppiness of Metroid 1 and um, the eeriness of Metroid 2. Like, Metroid 2 is often just sound and ambience. Oh god, and Metroid 2 is really nuts in that regard. Yeah. I mean, the... the some people like it and some hate it. I mean, the fight scene against Metroids is just noise! Yeah. It's just... Whatever. It's nuts. Pretty much. This game still has a basic melody, but there's a certain eeriness to it. It's... Well, it's yeah. no surprise. This game came out in 1986. The same year as a little movie called Aliens. Yes, those two, they have no inspiration. Well, yeah, I mean, Metro well, has I no inspiration from that one. Totally okay. not. Totally no. Now, this, this, this is fucking weird right here. It's like... Oh yeah, that. You, you, you probably noticed it, but, well, I want to get over there, because I think there's... I need to get up there, but... Well, in the first place, I froze this hop too close. I can't jump on either side of him. So now I just gotta wait for him to unfreeze. Freeze him at the right time. Okay, great. Now I can get up there. But something is amiss. And, uh oh. Something is wrong here. Yeah. Yeah, this is not my fault. This is not. I. The I, NES I, is to blame. Yeah, th something's going on here. I'll just go out and come back in. And would you look at that? I don't know why that guy didn't spawn, but he didn't, and that's unfortunate. It must have something to do with sprite limits and such. It didn't even seem like there were that many sprites on screen, though. I don't, I don't yeah. understand what happened. Anyway. As you said, 1986. Yeah. 
I'm alleviating my missile problem by just getting a couple extras because there are a lot of doors I'd like to open and well I don't want to have to go farming around like mad so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sacrifice a couple minutes one or two minutes and just come up here and get three missile packs now I got 20 and I can open a bunch of doors and I can be just fine that's that's my plan here yeah that's pretty sensible I should know uh, the later me Oh, the, the later Metroid games never really gave you that many items just on a silver platter. It was always just one riddle for one item, it seems to yeah. me. Hell, there's like two or three more missile packs up there if I wanted them, and another ice beam if I didn't get that earlier one. But I was, what was I going to say? I was just going to mention that uh, I'm going to need those missiles because it's not really... <laughs> I don't want to go farming like mad. It's, it saves that. That's great. And Dipson's blue for some reason. Now here's another fun thing that glitched out in my favor. You see these little uh, lava sea horses? They should yeah. be spewing fire at me. But I th there's some sprite limitation nonsense going on and they are not spewing fire at me for some reason. Yeah. Right. I, I think that's a pretty known glitch. I think that's happened to me as well, at some point. Strange. But yeah, I should mention, this is not actually a speed run. Oh, I'm, I'm probably going to beat the game in uh, less than an hour, but this is not a speed run by any means. I'm not pro. I don't know the pro strats. I'm getting all these items that people don't even get, like extra missile packs or the high jump boots. Most people, most pro speedrunners just know how the heck to deal with that on their own. Well, there's one thing that there's one thing that I know about Metroid speedruns. You can do it in about 15 minutes, and it uses a really strange exploit. Where oh, you, that glitch! Yeah. Yeah, the, um, the statue the chamber. The beat one boss glitch. Oh, uh, well, let's talk about that for a bit. And yeah, I kind of screwed myself up there. There's two bosses in this game: Ridley and Craig. You got to beat them before you can get to the final area. Because up in Brinstar, there's these two statues that you shoot once you beat them, and they make a little bridge. But if you only kill one boss, and then come in there with the ice beam, and somehow lure an enemy in there, you can sort of get down in lava, and use it as a platform, and climb up, and access the final area of the game early. Yeah, it, it looks really weird when someone does it. It's, it's one of those take-damage-to-advance things. It's... Oh, yeah. It's take. really hard to pull off. Um, yeah. I wouldn't want to pull it off. There's a lot of click got tricks that people can do with Metroid. I'm not one of those people. I just know my route and I can sort of competently get at it. That's that's my job here today. I never really learned many Metroid tricks. I mean, Super Metroid um, was really famous for having all these hidden tricks. Some of them had to do with boost shoes and Shine whatnot. and murder beams, and that trick where you, like, sacrifice your bombs for health or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This You've got, like, the most broken item in the game now. Screw attack. Oh, yes. The screw attack. This is pretty much the coolest item in this game, I'd say. Oh, yeah. It, you do a death somersault. It makes you glow, and it damages enemies and you don't get hurt. So basically, I can just jump through all these hard enemies that were hitting me before and kill them like nothing at all. And I, thi I think I never found this item as a kid. Um, it's not even so deep in Norfair, but yeah. just finding these three blocks and actually getting up them is pretty challenging. Mm -hmm. it, it, a lot of the stuff in this game is kind of well hidden. Yeah, Nintendo Power helps. <laughs> Oh yeah, Nintendo Power helps. Or, in yeah, my it's... case, the internet. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of the secrets in Metroid are just... secrets that you really just wouldn't think of looking for. There's really just no... not your instinct that you would just put a bomb at some random spot. Yeah. It's just something you've gotta know. It's something you gotta know, or if you like, just keep trying and trying, and you're like, Ah, where do I go? Oh! I, I blew a hole in the floor. That's, that's incredible. I don't know why this block didn't break. I mean, it seems like the blast radius was close enough there. Yeah, getting that uh, one out of the way is a little bit iffy. Okay, but we're fine now. 
And we're well on our way to get into the first boss of the game, actually. Or a second, I don't know, because we're going after Ridley first, because we're down here in Norfair, and you get to Ridley's lair through Norfair, whereas you get to Craig's lair through Brinstar. Now, it makes a hell of a lot more sense to go down to Ridley now, than to go back up to find Craig, then go back down and kill Ridley, then go back up to beat the game. I mean, I'm just making sure that I'm in the right place right here. Just kind of completely sure, you know? Yeah, um, you really, I really don't think you would be able to beat the game in time if you went back for something else now. I, I really don't think, um, you really gotta take Ridley on your first visit to Norfair. It's funny because in sequels, well, Super Metroid is about the only real game that had both. The Zero Mission 2, I suppose. Kraid is always the one you fight first, and then Ridley. And Kraid is, like, way easier, but in this game, it is the complete opposite. Ridley yeah. is actually kind of a joke. <laughs> yeah. Ridley kind of took the place of the, well, penultimate rival-like boss to Samus. Yeah. Because of their backstory and whatnot, and because Ridley was the one who came after Samus's planet. Yeah, that's that Metroid manga that made a bunch of stuff. But now we're in Ridley's lair, and uh, you can tell the music is really kind of spooky and eerie. And that's yeah. something that you mentioned there. I don't think there's yeah. any goddamn way to avoid getting hit by that ball. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, I, I'd say that the Kraid and Ridley themes are my favorite in this game. Well, maybe the um, boss theme and Turian theme. I, I think Brin I would seem the best myself, but we're just going to bypass this entire nasty little room. It's just it is. It's, it's something that I said earlier. Um, I think Brinstar and Norfair are still a little bit too tame for this, well, almost survival horror game. I mean, oh, that's yeah. pretty much what, what Metroid is trying to be. Oh yeah, it's, it's really... And Metroid 2 sort of kind of nailed it. I mean, it really has a good atmosphere now, man. But this one definitely does too. Yeah. It's great like that. But we're going down. We're going down even further. You just and got your second E-Tank. Yep. There's a lot more E-Tanks in this game than um, you can actually carry. Yeah, the max is six and there's like uh, seven or eight. Maybe like eight, yeah. I'm not I never sure. found all of them. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to probably get most of them, just because they're on the way and junk, so might as well. Besides, I'm probably going to need them for the final battle. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, because this game is pretty hard. Yeah. I, I mean, games in the NES era just had to be um, challenging to make up for the relatively low length. I mean, Metroid games were all, always made to be completed quickly, but the older ones more than the newer ones. Yeah. I mean, the newer ones are pretty goddamn long. <laughs> yeah, the Prime series is uh, made to be played in a slower pace. It, yeah. it doesn't reward you for speedrunning, I think. And uh, here's Ridley. Hey, you see him, he's how you do it. Easy as hell with the ice beam, you just freeze the fireballs and then you can just sort of stand in place and shoot them. Ridley is um, under contract to never shoot more than five plasma balls because otherwise the Zebesian Health Institute will have his hide. You know, global warming and all that jazz. Yeah, you don't have that even when you live in a big lava layer at the very bowels of the planet Zebes. I really, n I've never known how to say that word. And he's dead, and we got a lot of missiles for that. You killed him pretty quickly. I mean, yeah, he's, I told you, he's easy. And this purple door, you need 10 missiles to open. Just cuz. Just cuz. Ah, got hit again by surprise. But it's Just not so seeing bad that makes you, makes you furious. <laughs> It's not so bad because there you go. Here, we're we're sorry we did that here. I have a tank. Yeah, it's always nice to give you a full refill after a boss fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
it's, it's, it's good, yeah. Well, you could skip it, or you could not even know it's there, but who, who's not going to do it? That what you just did there was really skillful. Oh, that bomb! <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, that impressed by really that. Nice. Yeah, I wish I could have done, got pulled off the other one that I uh, had going. That I wanted to do later in the run, but that one—that's uh, that's pretty great. Skillful little bomb jumps. Look at me, I'm pro. I swear I'm good at video games. I totally am. I'd be battle dodge, you know. You sure did. Yeah, but this is not that. This is a much better game, I think. It's so good. Certainly. And you should all play it. Maybe even with this script. If you want. I like this one. It's a lot of balls and you can just screw all the balls. Oh, um, that doesn't sound right. Well, yeah. The way really? back through the um, through the Ridley zone mm -hmm. is a lot shorter, right? Uh, it's not as bad. It's about it's about the same, really. We just gotta climb through this, and then we gotta go up a vertical shaft, and then you're pretty much back. So it's not so bad. Now the climb back out of the Crades layer is oh no. Yeah, you really can't um, rush that one. It forces oh. you through a lot of rooms. You know what I never knew as a kid that, um, well, no one really did, was that these zones were called just Crate and Ridley in in Zero Mission. Yeah. I really don't think they had a name in the original Metroid. Crate's Lair and Ridley's Lair, I believe. That's what you just call them. They're lairs. They're yeah. Not really any no zone. It's just they're lair. In magazines, I al always, um, I'd always translated that they'd call it um, hiding spot number one and number two. They, uh, yeah, that might be a hiding spot. That, that sounds about right. Yeah. Well then, you're very now close begins, to the elevator. Now begins the long climb back out of this place. So continues the long, arduous climb back out. Yeah, your next destination is gonna be Crate with a few stops in Brinstar. Don't yeah. think there's oh. anything else left in Norfair all that much. Well, the thing about Norfair is it's pretty much just missile central. There's lots of missile packs to get and well, about the only items that you really can get are a second ice beam, the wave beam, the jump boots, and the screw tackers. But, oh, I believe it's down there. This game is kind of light on items. Pretty much. Not as much so as Metro 2, it. though. Oh, Metro 2 with what? Is less? I mean, like, I thought Metro 2 added more. They had, like, the, uh... I think... Well, you kind of start with the morph ball and jump, but you've got the spring ball... Do you have the spring ball in Metroid 2? Yes, the spring ball is in Metroid 2. And I think you're right, I think Metroid 2 has 39 collectible if you don't count the multiple beams. I think that's more than in this. Yeah, this one has a 36, and I know that because of reasons. You know, with all the um, evil aliens and Beasts and Ridley and Kraid and what Samus has to fight. Um, you know what my biggest terror in this game was? What's that? The password system. Oh, I hated the, the password system of Metroid. I before that I never had to deal with. Also, you got um, hit by an invisible force there. Um, yeah. Before that. Um, before that game, I never had to deal with really long passwords, and I was still so little when I played this. It was terrible. I would so often write down the wrong passwords. That's and happened to me too. Yeah. Then all your progress is gone. Yeah. I don't. Uh, passwords are weird, but the Famicom, yeah, this system one that actually had saves, kind of like a Zelda sort of thing, but. Well, back in 1986, they hadn't really perfected the art of battery-backed saving and cartridges. Yeah. Zelda was the first, and that was still a year or so away, so... Yeah. I remember and... then that when I um, lost a password for like the fifth time, I called the um, 
Nintendo hotline for gaming tips and asked oh, them wow. if they could give me a password. Uh, the lady on the phone um, really seemed to almost get angry at me like I was asking for a cheat code. I felt <laughs> so bad after that. Oh, that's, that's, not the, that's not what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to help you. It's like, I lost my password. No! Yeah. You're, you're paying for... You're paying them one nine hundred two ninety five a minute. They should be like, oh, okay. Here, here's the password for Norfair. Have a blast. Uh, they told me that they didn't have any passwords because... Um, well, they didn't really give a reason, but I... I think that the passwords in this game are just so calculated with all those variables, yeah. what missiles you got, um, how many and such. Um, they just don't have any like those. I mean, she should, she, she could have just gave you a, a password to like Norfair or something. Pretty much, but oh well, it's all in the past. All the tears have dried up. We got password generators, so blah. Um, there were two special passwords in this game, right? Oh yeah, there's the special passwords. Yeah, okay, you, you can talk about them, why not? That's a fun bit of info that I didn't even think of. Um, the most famous one is definitely Justin Bailey. No one really Justin knows Bailey. who Justin Bailey is, if it really is a person, but that's pretty much uh, brings you to the start of the game in... Um, Norfair. In Suitless Samus. Was it Norfair? Yeah. But yeah, you start in Norfair with like pretty much everything. You, you actually... gotta get the Ice Beam though, because you start with the Wave Beam. But other than that, you've got like every power up. And yeah, just... and I think both go, bosses are dead too. To yeah, you can just go to Norfair, get the Ice Beam, and then go right up to Turian with Justin Bailey. And Justin Bailey, I'm pretty sure, is not actually a person or anything. There. I've read rumors that just in Bailey is like Bailey is like British slang for swimsuit. So just in oh, swimsuit, yeah. just in Bailey, but that that that's a lot of bunk. It's just garbled text that just happens to resemble words. And the other password I think is called Narpa Sword. No, Narpa not sword. Yeah. What am I saying? Sword. <laughs> Narpas sword. English. Well, because of the way this password splits into it's Narpass and then sword. Some people say it stands for North American Release Password, but whatever it is, it's a weird one because it is almost like a cheat code in a way. Uh, I heard once that it uh, was supposed to mean not a real password. I don't know <laughs> that's, too. That's that's a fun one too. I don't know too much about Narpas word or I, whatever I, I it's remember. supposed to mean um, but yeah what what it does is basically it makes you like immortal and it starts you off in prince star and you can't like take damage or die or something and you start off with a weird beam it's like the ice beam but the sprite for it is the wave beam sprite it's really weird huh You're... and i can tell you a story is that one time on my actual nes copy of metroid I put in the NAR password, and I started playing the game, and I just went through it because I could beat it. And it w I was at Turian, I was about to beat the game, someone walked in the room, they accidentally tripped over the controller cord, knocked the NES off, and turned it off. That happened. Yes. Well, uh, you can be lucky about one thing. Uh, at least you didn't play Dark Souls back then and got your save file corrupted in that game. Oh dear god, that would be... I think that's worse. <laughs> yeah. But we're not playing that game. You so. know, we didn't even talk about the item we got just now. We got the various suit. Oh yeah. It halves your damage. So busy talking about NAR passwords and junk, we're not even telling you what about the game, but... Well, it's Metroid. If you haven't played Metroid, you probably don't care about Metroid. And if you have played Metroid, you know all this stuff. And you just want to watch two guys just talk about Metroid and be all real happy about it. Pretty much, but in this game, um, the Varia suit is really important. Um, I really think that Metroid, the original, is one of the Metroid games that's just most about um, fighting and surviving. Yeah. Ever since then, Metroid yeah, I mean, you games... You probably beat the game without the Varia suit, but eh, you, 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 
you're gonna have a hard time, so I just grab it. Because I wanna live to beat the game, you know? Later Metroid games um, were really more about the experience um, with um, a fair bunch of save points at key spots, so it often isn't about um, fighting, unless you do challenge runs, of course. Yeah. And now we are, the favorite music of the game. My favorite music of the game, Crate's Lair. Oh god, I love this track so much. So much. It is a great track uh, for a zone that gave me a lot of grief. I died so much in Crate's Lair. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a really hard lair, and I'm trying to get there, but it took a little bounce to get me up there. It's tough. I'm just trying to get another E-Tank, because wow. I often went here without the Variah suit, and that um, is really a problem, because 20 energy per hit, that's just too much. Yeah, Crate is uh, actually kind of hard. I don't know about hard, but he's definitely going to actually hit you. Yeah. Because he actually, you know, attacks with more than just five fireballs that you can freeze. The problem is if... Well, let's go over Crate when we actually get to him. Yeah, for now let's just enjoy this music and well... Here, here's a fun fact that you probably all knew. Um, the various suit is a weird thing, Japanese language stuff. It's actually supposed to be called the Barrier Suit? The Barrier Barrier. Uh, barrier barrier Suto, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't speak a lot of Japanese, and I apologize for butchering that one good time, but it's okay. Now that room that we just left, oh, that's a, that's a key little linchpin. We're basically going to climb back up this way, which, well, Creed's Lair is sort of a thing. You know this tower in Ridley's Lair, the descent to Ridley and the ascent back up were pretty much the same, really. But here it's a bit different, and that's because of this place here. Geronimo. Oh yeah, we gotta get, get back up that. That's gonna be fun times. Oh, it's gonna be so fun. But we won't worry about that just yet, because we have to go find Craig. He's yeah, very close here. nearby. Yeah, I love this room because of the little toothy face that the tiles make. I don't think they can hurt you, can they? I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But here's the man himself. He shoots chest spikes and these weird things. You can just sort of shoot him with either missiles or your gun here, but I'm gonna play the fun way and bomb the crap out of him. Just get inside his sprite. I always thought the bo that the bombs are pretty useless in this game, but I guess you're proving me wrong here. Eh, kind of. I don't know. You could. Pr it's probably a better idea to fight with missiles, and there might be a faster way to bomb, beat him. That I don't know, but I know him pretty good. I mean, I've got the health to spare and all, and I beat him. And help, even if you took quite a lot of damage. Well, look, and it's another E tank. Isn't that great? Getting this one Maybe can be very tricky, uh, but you did it first yeah. try. Congrats on that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's great. And now comes the hard part. The part that could probably kill your run. Your super speedy swimsuit run if you're uh, trying to be cool. Because this climb back up is bad. It's really bad. It sure is. Uh, oh yeah. And you're even having um, the advantage of the Lua version. Yeah, the advantage of the Lua version, which... I've beaten this w on console. I've done it. It was a thing, but yeah. You basically had to get in this little pillar of collapsible blocks and shoot your way up. And well, on the NES or whatnot, you're supposed to just time it correctly. So you jump up as the blocks reform. Because if you're in the blocks when they reform, you're going to like get knocked back and then you're going to fall down this hole, which I've done and it sucks. But... And then you're going to reset your NES in frustration. I don't know if I go that far, but I'm just going to go... But thank God that I can see the numbers. This is about the only uh, useful thing that the number counting can do, is do that. A little countdown on the blocks, so you can actually sort of time it right. It's helpful, I guess. 
but I've done it without, so... No, yeah. Uh, either way. With a good sense Point of is, time. I don't like this room. I don't like this room. I, I just don't like it. I don't think anyone <laughs> does. Anyone sane does. I, I'm insane. I kind of like battle tones, but I don't <laughs> like this room. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, but we're out of it. That's one of the hard parts. But there's still a little more trouble to be had in climbing a Craig Slayer, believe it or not. Though, not as bad as this, thank god. Okay, yeah. There's a kind of a section where the game forces you to take the long way around. Well, not entirely. Here, just, just... I just wanted to show off this right here. Now, you remember that fancy little cool roll jump I did when I got out of Ridley's Lair and you were like, Oh, Fresno, that's impressive. That's really cool. That's what I was trying to do there. I was trying to do a nice bomb jump and jump over that pit and get on the other side. But I messed it up. And now I have to sort of climb around. It would have been really cool if I did that, but I've never actually done it. I've seen it done, though, and it, it really looks impressive. But either way, it doesn't, it doesn't take that much time to climb out of here. And I'm still pretty good. I mean, we're at the end game here. We are actually walking towards the final boss now once we climb out of here, because Ridley and Crate are dead. Yeah, and you still That's have great. 21 minutes. A little bit more, even. So time's yeah. looking good. It's looking good, but that's not to say that the final area, Turian, is not... Well, it's not easy. Oh, God. Well, pretty much, pretty much everything can, can go wrong in Turian. Yeah, and everything probably will go wrong when we get to Turian. <laughs> yeah, well, especially in the original NES version, um, if you ever died in a quick run like you're doing now, you pretty much could forget about it. I mean, 30 energy, no E-Tanks, couldn't be done. You had, If you die in this game, you have to farm. There's no way around that. Yeah, it's, it's nasty, believe me. I guess if you start with 9 energy, it wouldn't be so bad, but then you've run into the problem of, well, the main enemy in Tyrion, which we're going to see in a couple minutes. We're just going to run through this old territory that we've gone through, like, this is the third time we've run through this room so far. Well, Brinstar is pretty much the most, well, central part of the game. The main hub, if you want. I suppose so. It's nice and easy. It's got good music. Great music in this game. Love the music in this game. It's very moody, as, I've, as we've said. Moody, atmospheric. The Metroid 2 is really, really atmospheric. It's more that you know. Now, coming up is something that really scared me when I first saw the footage. Oh. You're going to skip the long beam. Oh yeah, I'm skipping the long beam. That's a, that's a power-up that you can get that uh, makes you able to shoot all the way across the screen. Now, in the test run, I did go get the long beam, but then I did another test run and I did without it, and I was like, oh, I can do it without, so that's fine. I guess I won't get it here. I'm so glad that the long beam just kind of became the standard equipment of Samus after this game because I really hated yeah. that your beam felt like a melee weapon. I mean, I mean that's not what a gun is for. I'm surprised that the Lewis script didn't find some way to give you the long beam from the start. Yeah, something they could have done. Probably. What's uh, the long beam approach. in? What's the long beam in Zero Mission? You know, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, let's not linger it's on it. Yeah, it's been a while. So here's the statue area that we were talking about. Where you just lure an enemy down to the lava pit and then use the stair to bomb your way up and get in there. So you can get down to the final area of the game. And what a final area that is. I died a lot in Turian. Didn't we all? Now the main hazard in Turian are the Metroids! Yes. And you've got to say one thing about Metroids. They are scary. And they're scary for really clever reasons. They're not enemies that are just big and bulky and just strong, but they really work like horror monsters. I mean, they try to catch you off guard and such. It's, it really works well for this game. If you go if you go fast down this thing, like 
well, you would probably be doing any other time in the game. You're going to get swarmed by like two or three of these things. They're going to latch onto you. And they're going to like suck you dry. If you get latched on by two Metroids at once, it's basically over. You, you cannot oh get God, out of that. Oh my God, that can happen? Yes, that has happened to me before. Oh my in this God. game, it's even more likely than in Metroid 2. Um, because the Metroids in that one are very far apart. Much more than in this one. <laughs> you see that? I just bounce off the Metroid when I do the screw attack on him. It's great. <laughs> it doesn't even hurt them, though, does it? No, it doesn't. The only way to kill a Metroid is to freeze it and then shoot five missiles at it. Yeah. And then there's these things. I believe their official name is Rinkas, but yeah, you can call them Cheerios, Spaghettios, Fire Rings, whatever. They are the worst. <laughs> yes, they are pretty terrible. They just keep. I always the just sexually. saw them as Thanks. kind of a well laser, a laser that you can destroy for some reason. Not really a Our beam. Entries. I don't like. Them. I don't like them at all. <laughs> I don't think anyone does. We get especially bad when we get to the uh, final screen, but we're not quite there yet. We're just gonna uh, take these Metroids. I want to make sure I have plenty of missiles, so I'm not killing every Metroid I see, because I'm really gonna want a lot of missiles. Yeah. Metroid really forces you to use missiles. I mean, there's really no other way than to freezing these guys and killing them like that. I mean, if you go here with a wave beam and you just don't know what awaits you, you can't win. It's simple as that. that Lua version. But if you did that in the Lua version, you could turn off the wave, which is a great feature if you're playing oh, yeah. this game for the first time. But of course, if you're watching this, then you're already seeing the end of the game and you're definitely not going to know anything about the first time, so oops. Okay, here we go. The final room, the final screen, the final boss fight. This is... Oh, this is a pain. Well, you've got these infinitely spawning uh, Cheerio things. You can freeze them, though. You've got a million turrets on the wall, and you've got these weird barrier things that... Well, they regenerate as you shoot them. You can only blow them up with missiles. It takes about eight to do so. But there's no safe ground to stand and just shoot at it because you're constantly under threat from both the Cheerios and those turrets. Yeah. So your only real option is to freeze the Cheerios and then sort of just try to find a way you can hammer out at these damn barriers. It's really grating. Uh, you know what I would like to see? A no-hit run of this hallway. <laughs> oh god, no, I, I don't think that's even possible. Probably by someone who can calculate pi minus something half a million thingies and Calculate knows that a safe spot is, is on x equals 41, y equals 21. Basically not a human being. Yeah. I, I call myself not a human being, but even I don't know. Oh yeah, that. I but know. Here, oh yeah, by the way, there's our final boss. It's a brain in a jar. Yeah, it's the famous mother brain. Completely, yep. well, ridiculed in Captain N. Oh god, poor Captain N. Captain N didn't even have Samus in it. She was in the, uh, she was in the Captain N comics. I believe. Yeah. She was never actually in the TV show. It was all just Mother Brain. And she sounded like this. <laughs> Fighting Mother Brain um, is so hard because of one thing: that little pit that is right next to her. That little acid pit. I don't say that's. The, I don't think that's the only thing that's hard about fighting Mother Brain. Everything is conspiring. Oh, oh, look at this. But speaking of that pit, this thing is a pain to try and get out of. Now, I probably absolutely. Just, uh, I probably could have just stood in place and pumped missiles into her, but I was trying to uh, get out of there and get back to my vantage point. But this thing is too tough to get out of. It's it's nuts. I. I oh, okay. I made the platform. I. Oh, oh, I. I, I can't get on top of that for some goddamn reason. What, what, what's with that? The problem is that you can take contact damage from Mother Brain's jar for some reason. You can? Yes. Can... Uh oh, oh, jeez. That's why it's so hard to get up on that little ledge to the left. Oh. Well, this is not a very good Mother Brain fight, but 
I'm well within time, and I just want to illustrate how much of a goddamn slog this fight is, because, oh god. Oh! Oof. I got saved by that Cheerio. Just a little pixel kept me from falling back into that lava pit. That, that's, that's great. It's absolutely great. I don't know how many missiles you gotta pump into this lady, but it's quite a lot. Almost dead, I think. There she goes. I don't well, think we it's. Beat Metroid. I don't think it's too many missiles, but it's just so hard to land hits. Yeah. Anyway, now we gotta get the hell out of here, which is actually not that hard at all. This These is one of. Are a little tricky. This but timer is one it. of the things that got a really iconic for Metroid, um, mm -hmm. but I really don't think it was um, before Super Metroid. Yeah, Super Metroid had a lot more of a tense escape sequence, because the timer actually was short. It was three minutes, as opposed to like 999 super seconds. And really, this thing is way shorter than the escape from Super Metroid. Like, we're done already. And the only reason I'm lingering is so you can hear the rest of this song, which is great. It was actually used in Metroid Prime 2, when you had to escape from the, the dark, or whatever, at the end of it. They use that song again. It's, it's, it's a good song. And you're doing a little victory boogie here. Yeah, I did it. Look at that. 48 odd minutes. 49, almost 49 minutes. But we did it. It's great. Kaboom. That's Metroid for you. We fulfilled the mission. It may be invaded by the other Metroid. Oh. Or the other M, as it were. It's yeah. actually an ending with no typos, am I right? Uh, fulfilled is typoed. Oh. That's it. And there's our reward! Bikini Samus. Never really saw this uh, when I was little. Never really got good enough at this game. Uh. Don't even think I got the... Well, somewhat good ending of Swimsuit Samus. Leotard Samus is the uh, next best ending. Is you get it for beating the game in less than three hours, which is possible if you know what you're doing, averagely. If you're not trying to super speed like I was just doing, you'll probably get that ending. Like, once you get a handle of the game. By the way, can I, just, can I just say I love this credits music? It is absolutely brilliant. I do too. Ah, it's so great. You know, I actually recorded the ending to Metroid on videotape, and sometimes I used to put it on and watch it just for this ending, before the YouTube. The they should. Thing, you can just do it. They should bring this out as here. a soundtrack. They should. Maybe they already I did, who knows? They might have. There's a Metroid Metal soundtrack, I know that much. 1986. I was barely. I was an infant that time, and I. And most of you probably weren't even born. I was born in that year. Oh, that's lovely. We were both alive for Metroid. And then we both got to talk about it years later. But that is the end of Metroid. And the script has one final surprise. Telling you how you did. Well, I didn't get many items, but my clear time was superb. I wonder what. I wonder what the next mission is. Maybe Samus getting shot down in Zero Mission. But yeah. Probably, probably. Or maybe right, they well. mean Metroid Prime. Whatever. Maybe. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Mr. Gish. And thank you for having me. Yes. Now you can say your thing that you say at the end of your things. Bis bald.